Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rohan Khandelwal, your marrow surgery faculty. And it's an absolute honor to introduce Dr. Jui to all of you who has secured rank 7 in the recently conducted NEET PG exam. Now what makes Jui's story very interesting is that in the national mock which was conducted, her rank was 3000. And what she did in the next few days turned it around to rank 7. So we'll definitely talk about that in detail. So don't miss out her interview. So congratulations, uh, Jui. Uh, how does it feel? Thank you so much, sir. It feels amazing. It feels very unreal. Yeah, it feels like I'm dreaming. Yeah, I mean, so that is genuine surprise because a lot of in uh, toppers whom we interview, they would have got rank three and four in national mock. And then they would say they weren't expecting that rank. But in your case, from 3000, to coming down to seven, I mean, that's genuine uh, surprise and happiness. So, great. Congratulations. And uh, uh, Jui, tell us about yourself. Where did you graduate from? Is this your first attempt? Uh, just, just briefly tell us about yourself. Yeah. So, sir, I'm from Mumbai. I'm from Safe GS Medical College and KM Hospital. And this was my first attempt. I am still doing my internship. I have about three months to go. And yeah, I graduated last year in May. And... Uh, yeah, this was my first attempt. Okay, so Jui, you've been a, a Marrow Plan C user uh, for how long? Um, can you can you just uh, tell the users, please? Yeah, uh, so overall, I've used it about for two years. The first time I subscribed to Marrow Plan C was in 2020 when the lockdown happened. And uh, after that, uh, final year, we were going through final year. So back then, I didn't use Marrow so much. But after my final year results came out again last year in May, I bought Plan C again. So overall, for about two years, I've been using. Right. So Marrow has been your primary source of preparation for the NEET PG exam. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So, uh, Jui, I asked the same question I asked rank one. You took Marrow for two years. There was a transition in the edition from edition five to edition six. How did you manage that transition while watching the videos? Uh, so, so I was mainly handwriting my notes. And uh, so when the edition change happened, uh, I tried to stick to edition five as much as possible. I only noted down whatever changes, major changes, which I could notice between the two editions. But mainly I thought it was right to stick to one edition. And then I, because the pattern in all subjects was kind of similar. So to maintain the continuity, I just stick to uh, edition five. I did not, because there was an option in the app to uh, whether you want to watch the new edition videos or the old edition videos. So I used the edition five ones. Perfect. So I think so. that's what the topper did. And again, what I want to highlight here with uh, both their strategies is that, you know, there was no FOMO that, uh, oh, edition six has come out. It might be very different or the notes have become bulkier. They might be very different. So they stuck to edition five and they just added the extra points to their edition five notes, which they gathered by watching the revision videos or the Q bank or the pearls. They just kept on adding them there. And that is how you save time so that you can revise more. Uh, so, perfect. Uh, Jui, why were you handwriting and why didn't you opt for Marrow Notes? Any particular reason? Uh, so, so the first videos which I watched on Marrow were by uh, were the ENT and OBGY videos mainly. And okay. I remember Sakshi ma'am telling us very clearly that you need to handwrite your notes down. That is how you are going to remember all these things. And this was the advice I got from all my seniors as well, that when you write it down, you it uh, you can recall it better. It gets stored in your memory much better. And it was fun to write down because it, it was just, uh, it was so well written in the app itself. Like when I was watching the video, it was more fun to write stuff down and uh, organize it in my own way or make mind maps out of it rather than just passively watching. I had fun doing that. So, yeah. Perfect. So you watched all 19 subjects. You've already said that Dr. Sakshi had a lasting impact on you in terms of making handwritten notes. Any other faculties which you would like to mention? Uh, I am, uh, yeah, uh, I don't, I can't uh, really recall everyone's names right now, but 
Yeah, yeah, mainly it was Sakshi ma'am that I went back to again and again. Mainly I watched the OPGY videos a lot. So, uh, so you're so impressed by Dr. Sakshi. Are you going to take up OBGY and as your uh, preferred specialty in PG? Uh, mostly not, sir. My entire family is all OBGY. So I would like to uh, try something else and maybe you know head in a different direction. So you're preparing for INICT or you're going to take these three months uh, to make up your mind? Yes, I'm going to uh, sit back and relax over the next three months and I'm going to take my time researching different branches and deciding what I want to take. Perfect. I love that clarity of thought <laughs> and you should definitely enjoy these three months before the real grind begins. Uh, so coming back to your preparation, uh, Jui, so videos uh, are done, you made handwritten notes and you also discussed how you transition from one edition to the other. What about the QBank? How did you utilize it? Were you utilizing it during your final year as well or just during internship? Uh, so, sir, as I said previously, I uh, used Maro in my pre-final year. And back then, I was so preoccupied with the pre-final year subjects that I did not really pay uh, enough attention to everything else, which I should have. But I did not. And in final year, I did not have Maro. So when I uh, got Maro again last year, uh, I spoke to some seniors and I asked them whether it's possible to finish the QBank entirely in such a short period of time. So the suggestion I got from them is to use what I think is the best feature Maro has, that is the custom modules. And what I did was after every uh, after finishing the reading of every subject, I made sure as I was doing my internship, as I was walking around in the hospital or in the college or traveling, I made sure to make uh, custom modules of 50 MCQs every day for that one subject. And so even within that one subject, I could select the topics which I had read on that day. And then I used this uh, this feature to keep doing MCQs without having the pressure of you know finishing the entire QBank. Because I think this is what I could have done the best in such a short amount of time. And that really helped me. Right. So that, that sounds like a very interesting strategy. And uh, that's what I was discussing with rank one as well. Both of you have one thing in common that you cleared it during your internship attempt. And uh, you both are mentioning, you know, that when you go to the ward or you go to the hospital, you really don't have time to watch videos or, uh, you know, read notes at that point of time when you're in the ward. So it's uh, worthwhile utilizing that time doing questions like you did. Uh, or in his case, he used to refer to a lot of pearls. So that is uh, how you utilize time effectively. And then when you come back from your postings, you can always go through your notes and watch the videos again. Perfect. So um, did you take part in any of the marathons or were you more of a custom module kind of a person? Custom module person, sir. Custom yeah. module. Perfect. Perfect. All right. What about grand tests? Uh, were you taking grand tests regularly or... You, you realized a bit later on in your preparation that uh, you should uh, start doing grand tests. So I, the one advice I really got from uh, my brother as well as my seniors was to give GTs right from the beginning. I okay. have, give, I think I've missed only one GT, which uh, started when I started last year. So I think the GT started around June on Marrow. So then 2023 GT started in June and I have given every single GT except for one, which I missed due to some uh, internship work. And apart from that, I've given every GT. Apart from that, I made sure to give the old GTs as well from the app, which are still available. So I made sure to give as many GTs as possible because that is the only way I could see my progress in like, uh, in like real time. So I could see and to analyze what subjects I'm lacking uh, and where I'm, what are my weak points, what are my strong points. G the GTs were a game changer. Like, I don't think the preparation would have been as good if I had not given all the Maru GTs. Perfect. So what was your rank when you started giving GTs? Uh, was your performance continuously improving? Was there a stagnation in between? How did it go about? Uh, so, so initially when I had done only one subject, I gave my first GT when I had done only patho and I just gave the GT to see uh, where, what my understanding of rest of the subjects is. So initially I used to score like around uh, just above 400. So 414, 456, 465. This was my score. 
and my rank was always around thousand, two thousand. Uh, once or twice, I have got a three-digit rank, like around six hundred, four hundred. But it was never a, it was not a smooth uphill ride. So I did, I performed poorly in some GTs uh, every now and then, and then the, I used to get really disheartened because of that sometimes. But then actually, the use of these GTs is to analyze the mistakes instead of. using them as a indicator of your performance i realized this much later on but the key right. to not get disheartened and to check your mistakes and to improve upon them which i realized much later and then i i made sure to review every gt which i was given i had a review notebook separately where i wrote down all my mistakes and mm-hmm. i made sure uh, i went through this notebook one day before the exam so that was like your 20th notebook where you were writing down yeah. all the volatile points which were there perfect So, uh, Jui, can you tell us how did you filter out these PYQs in the Maro app, and uh, why didn't you do them earlier? I mean, um, wh- what made you realize that these are important in the last uh, one month or last forty days? So, uh, so I already knew from my friends and my seniors that the PYQs are very, very important, and you should be doing them. close to the like you should be doing them by hook or by crook like if you are not doing anything else at least you should do the pyqs and uh, i was trying to put it off to do it later and as close to the exam as possible so i would have those topics fresh in my mind i think i made a mistake by starting it uh, in the last month like i should have started at least two months in advance but uh, also what i did was i used the different bookmarks which are available on the app so i you, the question mark bookmark i uh, bookmarked all the difficult pyqs which i saw with a different kind of bookmark so i could segregate it from the other bookmark mcqs which i had and i knew that these were the topics which i have to uh, like have to get them right so i stuck to these mcqs which i was getting wrong out of the pyqs so better late than never i think so you did them on time and that's why you could get such a great rank Uh, and i think so jui has highlighted something very important that doing pyqs is important but it's not just the question it's knowing the entire topic around it so reading the explanation and if you're unsure of the explanation going back to your notes and clarifying those concepts is equally important because one needs to realize that everyone will do pyqs but what different are you doing while doing those pyqs is going to be the differentiator uh so jui can you briefly tell us about your revision strategy you did mention that in the last few days you did these pyqs uh, which uh, kept them fresh in your memory and you were able to apl- apply them in the exam but anything else in the revision which you did which you would like to highlight uh so sir i actually only managed to do one revision after my first reading and uh, originally i was planning to finish my first reading around november and starting the revision in december but because of my uh, some heavy postings in internship i could not finish uh, it on time so my first reading went on till uh, december and after this what i started to do was uh, along with one subject which i was reading for the first time i was also revising another subject which i had read uh, many months ago so in june if i read biochemistry so i was revising it simultaneously while reading some other subject for the first time and this was at least giving me some reassurance that i'm not blindly reading ahead and forgetting everything that i had read a long time ago and after doing this uh, by second half of jan i properly started to revise everything and to uh, to kind of defeat the monotony of reading one subject in one day i was i had made a schedule of revising two big subjects in one day and one mm-hmm. short subject along with it and i had divided my month in two halves and i was doing big subject along with short subject and i was doing three subjects together uh, so jui coming back to the exam uh, how many questions did you attempt and what was your actual score so uh, i attempted i attempted 199 questions so i left one and my score is 716 and uh look you come from a college uh, where everyone is a good student kem is one of the top colleges in the country right so um how did you manage the peer pressure and the pressure of so many bright students being around 
uh, and still preparing for the exam. So uh, it's like a double-edged sword, sir. Like on one hand, it's the peer pressure. On the other hand, it was a good check to keep myself in line so it's like ki everybody else is everyone is working hard everyone is going through the same internship postings that i have but nobody else is slacking off so neither should i that was one of the uh, ideas in my mind but also yes it was a lot of peer pressure as well like there was there is this constant uh, comparison in the head which goes on it's like isne itna padha usne utna padha and what i should be doing and what i'm not doing yeah so i uh, tried to surround myself with my friends who were very supportive and it was a healthy competition which we had and tried not to pay so much attention to what everyone else is doing follow make a schedule and follow what i have in my mind instead of changing my plan according to what everybody else is doing or what i'm hearing that others are doing i made a plan and stuck to it and i did not doubt myself 100 times i just uh made a plan and went ahead with it so i love your clarity so i mean what you're saying is that apna plan banao and surround yourself with positive people and just stick to it don't fall in the fomo trap uh, ki you know addition change ho gaya ya koi naya uh, koi aur kuch kar raha hai so you just stick to your uh, plan and you execute that perfect uh so Joey, you you seem like a a fun person, so I'm sure studies is not the the only thing which which were were doing in college. What were your hobbies which, uh, you know, kept kept mood light and uh, uh, kept you sane during your MBBS? Yeah, sir, I really enjoy dancing. I've danced in my college quite a bit. I enjoy singing and painting as well. And these were the things I uh, that helped me escape from the preparation every now and then. So yeah, perfect. and you told me that you were a mid ranker in college right and there are a lot of uh, students who are mid rankers and they aspire to be toppers what would be your tips for them uh, during their mbbs during their internship whatever you want to share with them because i think so this is a very important story which we are discussing where uh, you know the turn around and the change which happened in the last 15 20 days is remarkable and i'm sure a lot of people would get inspired by that so so please share your thoughts yeah so uh, so i think every student after neat ug when they join mbbs and they get into this new college with hundreds of other students it's very difficult to deal with the fact sometimes that maybe we are mediocre like maybe we are in the middle of that pyramid and we are not at the top and there's hundreds of uh others like us just around us so it's difficult to deal with that fact but my advice would be sometimes it's okay to accept that maybe we are mediocre maybe are not we are not meant to always be at the top and defeat everybody else and just push ahead it's very important that we first uh, protect our mental health like i want to emphasize that i did not push myself for a top 10 rank i was happy to get a like i was happy to get whatever rank i could get with because i knew i had put my best efforts in and anything more than this i know i would have probably had a mental breakdown or something of the sort so i tried not to push myself too much i was not going to compare myself to everybody around me who was going to probably get amazing ranks because everybody has their own journey i would not have accepted expected myself to uh, get this result you were one month ago either so it's very sometimes it's also luck sometimes uh, you may score 3000 in the national neat mock and then this might happen out of nowhere so yeah it's important to accept that whatever wherever you are it's okay if you're pushing it should be to become better not to become better than anybody else just better in general and to improve the knowledge yeah yes. amazing words and i think so so much of clarity that's what i admire about you and uh, you know you rightly said you don't have to ace every exam you just have to ace the right exam which you did so heartiest congratulations from our side and uh, please enjoy the next 3 months before you start your post graduation it was a pleasure talking to you thank you so much sir it was a pleasure talking to you sir thank you all right all right joey